Hello, this is chapter 19, exercise 42. It says, do women talk more than men? Uh, so right there, that's indicating a hypothesis test because it's asking a, a yes or no question. It says, another study. Uh, exercise 19.25 described a series of six studies investigating the number of w words women and men speak per day. Exercise 19.25 gives results from two of these studies. Here are the results from another of these studies. So we don't have to look at exercise 19.25 because we have the data from a different study right here. The estimated number of words spoken per day for 27 women are right here. And it, it ranges here. We have the first woman, 50,357 words in a day. Last woman, 16,616 words in a day. And then it says the estimated number of words spoken per day for 20 men are right here. We have the first man, 28,408 words a day. The last man, 5,255 words per day. It says, does this study provide good evidence that women talk more than men on average? So let's do a quick scan of this. If you look at all the, all the women, um, we have a, a lot of five-digit numbers here. Um, we have uh, quite a few women, uh, over 10,000 uh, words, uh, and, and then a few over 20,000 words in a day. If you look at the men, it looks like a little bit less um, on average. We have more men, it looks like, uh, talking less than 10,000 words a day. But we do have one guy here, 37,000 words a day. So it just, um, it's hard to know for sure. But my hunch would be that, that the, the mean would be higher for, for the women here. Anyway, let's answer the questions. But part A says, make stem plots for both samples. Are there any obvious deviations from normality? In spite of these deviations from normality, it is safe to use T procedures. Explain. All right, so first, let's make ourselves a stem plot and uh, with stem plots is it's easiest when you have two digit numbers here we've got five digit numbers how do I handle that well you have to round off so for example the first number uh, the, uh, fifth oops 15,000 so the, the first woman's uh, score was 15,357 okay let's round that down to 15,000 so just round all your numbers so you have two uh, just round everything off to, to the nearest thousand there. And then the five will be put in the leaf, and the one will be put in the, the stem. Now, since we're comparing men and women, let's um, have a back-to-back -back stem plot here. So women, men, um, and also let's split the stems because I've got quite a few in the 10,000, so I don't want my, my leaves to get too long. So I'll go 0011, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. And so this one means 10,000. This one means 10,000. This two means 20,000 and so forth. So for example, for the, this first woman here, 15,000, I will go one, five. And because I'm splitting the stems, the five will go in the, up, the second one. So it's one, uh, one, five. So that means 15,000. Okay, I'm going to fast forward. I'm just going to show you. I, I made this in advance to save a little bit of time. So here we have the full stem plot uh, right here. Uh, so for example, we have one, one and five. That's the first woman. Um, and so you can see here that we have a lot of women in the 10,000 range, uh, um, a, a lot of men in the lower 10,000 range, and a, a lot of men under 10,000 right here. The zero four 4 means 4,000. So it looks like there is a slight, um, a, a slightly more words for, for the women than, than for the men. Now, we have a couple, looks like a couple outliers here. It looks like a 38,000 here for the man. We have a 40,000 for, for a woman. Um, so it looks like those are outliers. And definitely we do have a skew here. If, if, if you were to look at this sideways or make a histogram, you'd see you've got a, a right skew for the women, or excuse me, for the men, and a, a less of a skew, but still there's a, there's a skew here for, for the women as well. So both, both are right skewed. And even that looks like there's outliers as well. Okay, so if you recall the, the conditions, um, if n is between, or I, I, I since it's two samples, excuse me, if, if n plus one plus n plus two is between 15 and 40, then I'd be in trouble. Outliers are are not allowed if you have less than 40. It's it's not um, 
close enough to, to a normal curve in that case. However, in this case, N1, let's see, yeah, we have, um, it says in the, in the problem here, it says there's 27, yeah. Um, if, if group one is the women and group two is the men, then N1 is 27. N2 is the number of men, which is 20. Okay, so it adds up there. N1 plus N2 is more than 40. It's, uh, it's 47. Okay, so um, if so, we don't have to worry about these outliers. If n is greater than 40, then pretty much anything is okay. Anything is okay. All right, so that's the answer to part A, is um, even though we have possibly outliers and even though we have a skew, it's no problem because the sum of the two samples is more than 40. Okay, let's move on to part B. Um, here, let's just get a new, uh, a, a clean, a clean slate here. So this is 19.42. Now let's move on to part B of of this question. So let's let's take a look at the at the uh, the question here. So part B it says test the hypotheses or the hypothesis null is mu one equals mu two against the one-sided alternative that the mean number of words per day for women, mu1, is greater than the mean number of words for men, mu2. What do you, what do you conclude? Okay, so uh, that's, that's just a hypothesis, a hypothesis test. So for part B, so first, the null hypothesis, the null is just mu1 equals mu2. All right, that, and that's always the case with these uh, types of problems. It's always the two samples, or the two populations are equal, that's, that's always your null. The alternate, it's asking, do women talk more than men? So that's mu1 greater than mu2. Okay, for alpha, it doesn't indicate, so I'll just do 0 0.05. I'll just do the standard there. All right, so that's that's step one of the hypothesis test. All right, um, steps two, three, and four, I will uh, do in part two of, of this video.